Epic's used a little bit too much, but that trip is just epic. is on everyone's bucket list. It's literally, it's the tip of Australia. It's the first, most, yeah. most northern part of Australia and everyone seems to have an obsession with getting there on in a four-wheel drive or on a motorway. Someone's ready to prove it. With going to the Cape and stuff like that, a lot of people plan their trip six to 12 months in advance, if not more. So leaving us two weeks out. Um, I haven't been on a bike for nine months. And nine months, You're yeah. a motocross boy. Yeah, I'm full it. motocross spec, so yeah, no trail riding, any of that crap. So I'm going off road, kind of scared both of us, especially going to somewhere like the tip. I mean, creek crossings, endless amounts of tracks, limited reception, if not no phone reception. Snapping um, handbags. Snapping handbags, you name it. Pretty much the closest hospital is you have to be chop it out. So, uh, and then throw in the heat. It was like well, above 46 degrees for three or four of those days. So that was good. So that's where I guess North Queensland Trail Bike Adventures comes into play um, as far as getting to the tip from Cairns uh, and getting home to Cairns as well. So um, as far as it's a six day tour, five nights, you're riding every single day for up to six hours or eight hours a day. Um, three to 500 kilometers a day. When you're doing that kind of stuff, the last thing you want to think about is having support and having to worry about that. So at least they have all that covered. So as far as support vehicles, mechanics, changing tubes, uh, having fuel, having hydration, having the food, uh, carrying your swag. So as far as what you've got on you, you've literally just got your gear and your hydration pack uh, and your bike, and then they carry much of everything else. Apart from Guy here with the with the camera gear with 20 kilos on his back that definitely made it harder for him but for the average punter who doesn't want to take all their stuff and wants everyone else to worry about it um, North Queensland Tropic Adventure by far are uh, the people to go with. So we're just unboxing the gifts from uh, Fox here they hooked us up with some Legion gear we've got different colours you wouldn't read about. Here's so pants and jersey we've got the view goggles also got the V3 helmet and the Instinct X boots um, so that's going to be awesome we've also got uh, the boys from Fist have helped us out with some socks and some gloves who's is who's? So we just had to take our gear bag, get to Cairns, find accommodation for the night, and then we're off in the morning. Yeah. It's Dylan from Wreckers to Checkers. Bloody excited to go. We're on the bus this morning at 6.45. So North Queensland Trail Bike Adventures is headed up by Greg Macbeth. Uh, his daughter Caitlin, his wife Karen, and Cuzzo is the lead sweep rider. Sweep rider? He's the lead rider. Um, so that was when we did, signed our lives away. We got the quick little speech on that it's a dangerous sport, you name it, rah rah rah. What we were in for, what we were to expect on day one, and that was obviously heat and a lot of riding. All right, awesome, it's day one here, it's 8.30, it's super hot. Uh, we're out here with North Queensland Child Bike Adventures with Caitlin. So uh, what can we expect today? So we've got some beautiful pine forests that we're going to be riding through today. Um, we've got a few couple deep creek crossings. Um, and then, yeah, we've got a bunch of awesome riders here. So we're going to be flowing nice and fast and having a great time. Yeah, it's getting warm already. So let's go. Let's go. Not sure what we got ourselves into here, but uh, we'll see how we go. <laughs>
Mate, we're doing well. We're about halfway through. Fatigue has started to set in, but we're good. Halfway through. Halfway through day, day one. one, and fatigue has set in. It's not looking good, but we're looking forward to this swimming hole tonight. Yeah, good. Absolutely loving it. It's nice and hot and very sweaty. We're about to um, get on the main road and then hit the curb track. Bloody flatty, mate. First day. First bloody day. Anyway. It's probably like 30 something plus degrees here, and I'll hate to be doing tanking this tyre. So we've got a little stick here holding the front of the bike up. I'm um, just about to throw up a new tube in it. Day one, we're on the bikes a lot. Uh, we head up from Cairns, go across the Daintree River onto the Kreb Track. Kreb Track is maintained pretty well. It gets pretty busy at times with a lot of four-wheel drive and bike traffic. We were pretty lucky, it was pretty dusty and not wet. Some people get stuck in there when it, when it gets wet in there, it, it gets real slippery. What, uh, what area are we in at the moment? Uh, we're in the, so the Kreb track, it's short for um, Cairns Regional Electricity Board. So that's how they used to maintain, this is their actual access road they used to use back in the day. It can get real busy through here, especially at the school holiday period. So you've got to be pretty cautious of all the on oncoming traffic. But rule, rule of thumb is most people go from north to south. At the end of the day, we ended up at Home Rule, and that's a, a beautiful property they have for festivals and camping and whatnot. Um, and we jumped in a pretty cool creek. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was quite chilly after a long day of riding. Um, it's prop definitely free. prop free. Had a natural swing there, which was pretty epic. Um, it was nice to wash off all the dust and dirt from day one. Look at this. It's bloody unreal. Fresh water. A little bit misleading though, because day one, I felt very comfortable staying in a cabin. We had beds, um, we got to swim in a swimming hole. And I was like, well, I could get used to this. So five more nights or four more nights of this, so I could definitely get used to this. But, wait for day two. <laughs> All right. It's day two here. Um, we're feeling pretty good. Hands are starting to feel a little bit sore, but um, so what are we clicking today? So I hope you're ready for today. We've got, got a big day. Uh, we've got about 180 k's of sand um, through an area called the Starkey Track. Uh, it's a beautiful area. Uh, you've got two different types of sand. So beach sand, it's loamy, grippy, fun. Momentum's your best friend. Yep. And then you've got bull dust and that stuff will spit you in all sorts of different directions. So yeah. hang on and yeah, momentum. Momentum. As yeah. you can see, we're quite dusty from yesterday. So we're, we're nice and juicy, ready for today. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> So it started day two, uh, we got on the bitumen and had probably about 30 Ks out, stopped in and checked out this massive volcano looking thing that massive 
clump of black rocks, rocks man, just <laughs> it's the only thing you could see on the side of the road. What is it? A pile of black rock. A pile of black rock, looks like a volcano about to erupt in our faces. But, um, uh, pretty impressed with a bunch of rocks. Oh, okay. We got the holly patrols. Oh, have you got a have you got an eight mil? Oh, what was that? It's an eight on this side. Oh yeah. Town, which was kind of cool to see. Um, beautiful coastal town. Uh, stopped at the lighthouse there and sort of took in the views, I guess. So. We've been out on open bitumen for about 30 k since uh, Cook Town, so um, it's been pretty beautiful. 100 and 100 k's on the highway, so it's nice and open on the bitumen, nice and cool. But as soon as you stop, you just start dripping sweat. But now we've stopped at a nice, beautiful waterfall here. Um, just had a bit of a break, and then we'll hit the open road again. Starkey track. Starkey track, full of sand, lean back, hold on, momentum is key. There we go. We just got to the start of the Starkey and um, got everyone pulled up here in a bit of shade because the next 100 k's is going to be pretty pretty hot and sandy and dusty. But um, we'll head through, we're going to yeah, do this, we'll go through this track and then we're going to come out to Cape Mel Melville National Park and then we'll keep continuing on through to Cowpell Crossing. But um, we'll see how we go because this is a track that takes a lot of victims. So it should, should be good, but everyone's good riders and Real sandy in the, in the ground's really white and you get that powdery, real powdery sand. So when you hit it, it just, it's like talcum powder. And, um, and just with the heat, everyone gets fatigued and they start making little mistakes and it just continues on. And, yeah, it just gets worse and worse. A lot of square edges, because the, tr the track's never been maintained. So once it was cut however long ago, the council and no one ever comes in. Oof. Starkey. 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 Too stark. Starkey. Starkey was hot and dry and super gnarly. This time of year, it's it's a bit of a joke as to how hot it gets, and so a few guys almost overheated and ran out of water, and we needed those PNG gel packs that um, Rhino Power gave us, so that was amazing. Probably a lifesaver, to be honest. It's thick sand. Like I said to Guy earlier. Um, there's two different types of sand through the Starkey. There's like the beach sand that's nice and grippy and loamy and you can, you know, rail different corners and then you've got bull dust which is just something different to ride in. It's like riding through talcum powder so it just, it's a challenge to ride through. It's, yeah, mo momentum is your best friend and you want to um, get up on top of the plane like it's like you're water skiing. And, it's a challenge, it's, it's definitely hard work and especially in this heat, it's, it's um, not for the faint hearted. So I take my hat off to all the boys who did it. It was a lot of fun, but yeah, a challenge. Starkey track was very brutal, it was I reckon a mid-40s day, um, super dusty, no breeze, no big trees to hide under, 
We've got a couple of flat tyres, so there are a few repairs. Yeah, the boys did really well to get us all through that. Starkey, uh, we've had a second flat for the day. Um, our lead rider, Kazo, has uh, got a flat rear, so not the funnest tire to change, but um, the track's been really interesting, it's sand super deep. Uh, it's like nothing else, like you, you go into it thinking you've got a bit of grip and it just slides straight out, so. He's got a bum bag, how come you're not in there helping? Um, because I have not told you I'm a qualified mechanic, that's a secret. Don't tell you on the secrets, mate. I don't want to work. Work smarter, not harder around here. Yeah, exactly. You hang at the back. Hang at the back, cruise, have fun. It'll be slow. You always the problem, you, the problem you've got is you've got too many Chiefs and Muff Indians. This is happening. Everyone thinks they know what they're doing, but they don't. I'll take that back, because I don't know what I'm doing. The Starkey is pretty much as remote as you're going to get as well. Towns or phone reception and stuff like that. So we had no phone reception. If anything happened, it would have to be a chopper and that can take up to three to four hours to get to you. So it's definitely not somewhere where you want to come off. And then even trying to find shade is hard because the trees aren't trees, they're like sticks. Towards the end of the, the Starkey track, we had what, three flat tires in, in about 45 minutes. So, both on lead and sweep riders. It wasn't even, <laughs> wasn't any any of the, the tour guests. What's going on here? Oh mate, we had a few casualty days with flat tyres. So, it's, um, what did we get all up out? I had three. You had one. I had one today, yeah. So, it was a hard day on the bikes. I think it was a hard day on everyone. With the heat, a good little sun share and cooled it all down. Uh -huh. Good guy. Good. Don't know if that's sweat or water. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly sweat. <laughs> so at the end of each day or the start of each day, the lead riders will go through and check over all the bikes. Uh, generally give them a refill. Uh, they run chucks on their air filters, about six layers of chucks. So obviously these bikes are breathing a lot of dust and they're riding for up to eight hours a day. So it's probably the easiest thing and, and the best thing to do at the end of each day is pull that one off and you'll have a brand new air filter. So um, as far as general check over, checking your tire pressures, making sure there's no leaks or anything wrong, stuff like that, um, and then you're good to go again. So it's just another thing you don't have to worry about when you're traveling with these guys. Spread on it or? Mate, that is great. Oh, commercial. Not too much, mate. That's, what, that's the key to it. That's heaps. Alright, it's day three, morning of day three. Just had some brekkie. We've packed up our swags. Um, but a 300k ride today. It's meant to be easy. So we'll see how we go and go have a pub feed and have a few skewies. No noise. Guys, as we were chatting about last night, locking off this concept seat every tour. Um, Prices go directly to Royal Flying Doctors. So when we uh, head into Cullen today, we'll have a pub feed and some beers and we'll go around the corner of Fennec and whoever is the highest bidder will pay directly to the Fennec today. Yeah, so it's been an easy day today. We're going to do probably approximately about 300 k's. And, but a lot of it's all road, like dirt road, but we'll do um, Running Creek, um, go through Lily Vale, and then up through Carwin, and we'll have a bit of a look at a few of the places. We'll have a look where the fresh meets the salt and one of the creeks, and we'll pull up there and have a look, and yeah, pretty nice, relaxing day. How much does that seat cost you, mate? 350. 3.50 well spent, I reckon. The butt's gonna thank me later. <laughs> 
So at the start of day three, they auction off a ride concept seat, which is a nice comfy seat, and all the proceeds go to the Royal Flying Doctors. Yeah, so we actually bundle all the money up. Um, sometimes the seats sell for well over $1,000, um, and all the money gets donated straight to Royal Flying Doctor Service in Cohen. Um, day three is one of those weird days. It's kind of when fatigue starts to set in. I know Guy was struggling from the previous day, a bit of heat stroke. Um, and day three is specifically set out for to be a slightly easier day with mainly dirt roads and, and bitumen roads. Um, and it's a little bit less time on the bike, so about four to five hours on the bike. Um, and we head into Cohen, grab a pub feed, um, have a big old lunch, and then donate the money. So it's definitely a day that you look forward to after those two hard days of riding. Your hands are starting to feel gross. Um, you're getting tingly all over, and you're kind of starting to get sick of listening to the DRZ 400 labour the whole time. Yeah, what's happened here? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, a bit of mischief here. Um, we're out of fuel, the big dog was thirsty going down that start, so we just did a race start before, so. But the question is, did you win? I didn't win. Oh. I just, I will spun and nearly ran to the back of you. It is what it is, but. We'll do a piss test on that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's a bit tough. Precious liquid gold. hydration and nuts in my mouth. Right, we just made it to Cohen. Uh, we're nice and dusty. We're at the Sex Change Hotel, ready for a pub feed. Can't wait for a beer. So leaving the Royal Flying Doctors, uh, things were starting to get a little bit messy for me. I was struggling a lot with heat stroke and a little bit of dehydration, or a lot of dehydration. Uh, we stopped in at a waterhole and <laughs> that, that kind of saved, saved the day for me because we stayed in there for about an hour and a half. Eventually made it out of the waterhole and rode along the, the road for the last hour and a half back into Archer River Roadhouse. So we finished the day off with a few beers, a few stories for around the fire, and uh, we're getting pretty pumped on the next day. More river crossings, a bit more sand riding, more adventures. We couldn't wait to wake up on day four and get into it. Day four, kicking off from Archer River Roadhouse. Jumped in and grabbed a pretty nice brekkie at the, at the roadhouse. It's a pricey egg and bacon roll, but so good. <laughs> Sausage and eggs, 25 bucks. Cheapest chips. This is daily routine, mate. Just checking oil, moving the chain, pulling off. All in all, they're pretty, pretty easy, mate. Oh. Busy part of the day. 
go watch in the morning. Wipe your hands up. Get cool during the day. For about five minutes until it's melting. <laughs> Uh, we just spent the night in Archer River Roadhouse here. Uh, it was a beautiful night. We slept under the stars, so it was quite nice. We had a full moon as well, so could see everything when we were walking around. But um, we just had to head off, get ready. Uh, we got about 15 minutes before we head off, so load it up and we'll go. Okay, today we're going through some awesome private property. A couple of private properties, actually. Uh, we're really lucky to have access to. Um, tonight it's going to be Morton Telegraph Station. Yeah, but today will be the telly track across the Pasco River. Awesome day. So this is the driveway. We'll just go down here a couple of days. Wolverton Station is a private, privately owned stock station just outside of Archer River Roadhouse. And um, yeah, we get to, we didn't take the trails, but the other guys on the tour uh, rode on some awesome single track. Uh, Caitlin had a little bit of a crash uh, and we met them at the station homestead. We had some supplies for them to Happy drop way. off. Happy we way. had gate key, gold. which was a box of uh, 4X gold. Love some 4X gold. And we also had some supplies for Christmas, uh, some wine, champagne, and also some stock feed and bits and pieces for stock. It's not what you know, it's who you know. When you're remote, sometimes you get asked to bring up um, Christmas supplies for them. This is the gate key. Can't go through the property without a gate key to get access. Bit sandy, a lot of trees, a bit of everything, except moisture. <laughs> <laughs> Filming, mate. So luckily, um, North Queensland Trail Bike Adventures, Greg is good mates with old mate from Wolverton Station. So they're a little bit different, they're unique because we're allowed to go through these different tracks and stuff like that. Whereas on other tours, sometimes you don't get access to those tracks. So it kind of makes the tour all that much more epic and you get to experience some tracks that other people don't even get to experience at all.
Yeah, so getting out of the uh, Wolverton Station, it leads into the Wenlock River and we were going through a few crock holes. Um, the river had mostly dried up, but or wasn't flowing. The river wasn't flowing very much at all, so there was a lot of crock holes and whatnot, a lot of deep sand. After a couple of bikes had gone through, it was leaving a lot of bog holes and, and making it harder for all the riders to get through. Yeah, so no matter what skill set of rider you were, I mean, I'm not an experienced trail rider, but even some of the more experienced trail riders on our tour were definitely struggling to get through there, and a few bikes actually went underwater, so it was quite an experience. Tools like this, everyone gets in, helps each other. If anyone's stuck or needs a hand, everyone just pushes on and you know gets their mate up the hill. And it's a yeah, good mateship, I guess. So from there we headed on to the Frenchman's track, which was awesome. Uh, it's probably one of the most fun trails I, we did on the whole trip, really. Uh, very sandy, a lot of fast trail through there, and that led on to the Pascal River. Uh, the Frenchman track, we're about to go through this creek crossing. Pascal River. Pascal River. I don't know what I'm doing, but um, we'll give it a crack with heavy boots. So the Pascal River is one of those unique river crossings where um, either the tour usually carries the bikes or even zip lines them across, depending on how deep the water is. But for this tour or our tour, we were lucky enough to actually be the first crew ever to ride through. So it was quite unique trying to pass through some of those rocks and get through, but definitely there was a few people that didn't and turn those DRZs into submarines. So they actually have a quite a unique way of getting the water out. Um, they put the bike in gear and roll it backwards and lift it up, pour the water out, uh, remove that air fuel, turn it over, and the bikes live again. So it's pretty impressive to watch and uh, definitely a testament to the DRZ 400. Can't kill those things. <laughs> How you feeling about this, mate? Yeah, good. I'm just going to do what Caitlin um, didn't do. I'm a bit nervous. Um, this is a uh, motocross track, that's for sure. They're not meant to be submarines. And we're putting them in water that's uh, what waist height. So, not happy.
Yeah, back to face mask. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, it's probably 40-ish degrees. We had two swims. We're getting towards the end of the, the trail here. Pasco River, Pasco we actually River. rode across. Not many people ride across. Yeah, we got to ride across it and we've just gone through, what's it called, this one? The, um, Starts with W. W, starts with W. You We're know, pretty good at that. <laughs> It's gone to us. So we continued on and finished off Frenchman's track and headed towards Morton Telegraph Station. Uh, I've got an epic little ice cream to finish off the day and some much needed repairs to be done to Tommy's bike. Where are we mate? The Morton Telegraph Station here for the night. Um, hopefully they got some ice cream and some cold Powerade because we're pretty rooted. Nice one buddy, what'd you do? Frenchies. Yeah mate, just survived. Six crashes. I think I rode off a clutch, two indicators and, and light, so they'd probably send me the bill. <laughs> but it was worth it, mate, every penny. Yeah, so Tommy actually cooked his clutch, busted a few indicators, um, and they also mentioned that they've only ever cooked one other clutch, so Tommy did a good job of that one. What happened here, mate? Oh, Tommy was a bit hard on the gear today, weren't you, Tommy? Cause some mischief. <laughs> Smoke the clutch. So this is Tom's as well that I found on the road. That I'll keep for a souvenir. I think a lot of hills and a lot of river crossings definitely got the better of the DIZ400. Um, but went to bed and couldn't wait for day five. Come on, mate. Come on, go on, how you going, mate? Good, good. What do we got planned for today? Plan for today, mate. We'll jump on the bike, cruise down to Greenmill Junction, and possibly have a quick coffee and a feed. And then we'll be into the telly. So across the south end of telly, into Fruitbat Falls and Twin Falls, and then we'll keep on cruising down the north section uh, up the Jardine River up to into oh, yes. All right, so it's day five here. It was our last full day of riding. We're going to hit the telly track. Uh, we'll get to go past Gunshot. Unfortunately, we don't get to go down it, but um, we get to go have a look. So we're just packing up now. It's already super hot, so we're ready to get cracking in at the last full day of riding. What are we doing, man? Stopping at Bramwell Cafe, mate. Um, we're getting a feed before we head to the telegraph track. That's what we're doing. Quick little toasty and Powerade. Going to the tip, mate. Cape. Yeah. We're going to get to there. We're on the southern end of the start of the telegraph track. So we'll do the southern end first, head north. And we'll do... So day five was the last full day of riding. Had some big ticket things on the card for the day. Fruit Bat Falls, Elliot Falls, Gunshot, telegraph track.
Yes, yeah, sir. At the gunshot, a quarter of the way through. It's been a pretty good trip. We had no traffic. We actually had a spot to ourselves, so not very often. Uh, we got to go get on the ferry and then we camp on the beach, have fish and chips on the beach. Doesn't get much better than that. How are you feeling, mate? Fifth day? Fourth day. Fifth day. Fifth day. Last full day. How are you feeling after that earlier incident? Yeah, that, that sucks. Got stuck in a bowl. Had to get a big out to give us a hand. Got out of that. Um, I wouldn't have burden not too. So yeah, lots of swimming, lots of riding, um, epic riding trails. Uh, a lot of the swimming holes, you just jump in in all your gear, which pretty much we did the whole trip, but um, flowing river, beautiful crystal clear water. No complaints at all, especially on a day like that. Yeah, fruit bat falls. You see it in all like the Instagram, Instagram models, photos and videos. It's epic, like the water is that clear, so good.
Ooh. We're getting close to the tip. Um, we're heading off for some dinner, fish and chips, and then some beers uh, to watch the sunset in the west coast. So it's like WA, but it's not. So it's kind of funny. The end joke here is um, we're in Western Australia, and then we can travel to Eastern Australia in one day. Haha. -ha. But um, no, it's good. Should be fun. Um, what have we got here? Oh, fish and chips. Fish Old and style. Chips. So wrapping up day five, jumped on the barge across the river to Bamaga. Yeah, where well, we stopped at Loyalty Beach. We got to watch the beautiful sunset into the ocean, a bit like when you're over in WA. Uh, and we had a nice fish and chips for dinner, followed by a few cheeky ginger beers. A few of the boys got carried away, but we'll keep that under wraps and off the camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're very eager for day six, actually getting to the tip and seeing that beautiful sign. Can you shall receive bacon eggs for breakfast? Unreal. Where are we? We're on our way to the tip. We're stopping at the croc tent here, get some souvenirs, Powerade, refresh for the day, and then we'll kick on. So day six, we woke up, we're only about 30 kilometres from the tip itself. We stopped at the croc tent on the way, had a look around. This thing was real, I don't think we'd be this close. Unfortunately, we haven't seen any of this trip, but um, apparently there are a lot out here, so got to keep an eye out for these snapping handbags. Let's get to the tip, mate. <laughs> And then we ventured out to the tip, so we rode up to the beach, and then we did about a two kilometer walk to the sign itself and made it to the tip. <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, but I was fairly relieved to make it to the tip. I know I had no damage just to the DR. Um, I know you had one indicator, I think it was. Yeah, I ripped an indicator, ripped a mirror. Yeah, so compared to the other boys, we got off pretty easy, I think. But um, we made it back one piece. We're happy, we're healthy, we made it to the tip. It's definitely a challenge mentally. Your hands, your body are sore, you're dehydrated from all the days up on the bike, and you're just basically excited to have a day without wearing boots and a helmet. There we go, mate. Made it, got everyone to the tip safely. Bonus. I mean, you made it. Yeah, mate. Just. All the way to the tip. Yeah, mate. It's a good feeling. All right, awesome. We made it to the tip. Uh, six hard days later, we finally made it. So super stoked. And um, science ready to prove it. So massive thanks to Caitlin and Greg Macbeth for Trip of a Lifetime. It was really amazing. And a big shout out to the North Queensland Trial Bike Adventure crew, uh, Kazo and Al, who are taking us on our tour, our lead and sweep rider. And um, if you guys want to do the tour, make sure you head over to their website. They've got plenty of spots available and they're doing tours every year. So if you're looking for the easy trip, check them out. <laughs>